Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing Nigeria and the future of leadership, and we have with us Dr. Moise Banire. Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Your Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 um, Thank you so much, um, Dr. Moise Banire, for staying with us. Um, we have a question from WhatsApp. Someone is asking, um, what steps must we take for this transformation, you know, if you can give us step by step when, you, when it comes to enforcing the rule of law? Well, it's not about the rule of law. Which, it depends on which aspect the person is trying to process. It's about having credible leadership imagine our system. Mm -hmm. Then it then means that we must start sectorially. And when I say sectorially, we need to operate in the manner of a cell or clusters. In other words, if you and I agree today, that things are not really well with our country, and we need a better leadership, then let us try and start convincing more and more people. If you aggregate an average of 20 people, which we have started anyway in different cells and uh, uh, clusters, you have your own 20, I have my own 20, somebody has another 20. We have given ourselves the next three months to get our clusters to meet severally and identify issues that we need to interrogate towards a credible leadership in the year 2003. We, our hope is that by the time all these courses are met consistently, then we are able to convene a round table of a whole day where we aggregate all these opinions and then come out with our uh, uh, road, uh, roadmap. And that is the way to go. All right. Okay. Um, Dr. Banere, do you believe in constitutional restructuring? Because a lot of people have been clamoring for that. Do you think yes, way forward? I think constitutional problem, but it's a mirage. Hmm. It's why, a mirage. Do, why do you and say so? Never likely to happen. Never what? likely to happen because those who are there now certainly would not allow it. I can assure you, one million percent of that is not feasible. But but, but we, not, we, we voted uh, them in. We can vote them out and put credible people that would ensure that. Are you sure you voted them in? Is it that many? There are too many <laughs> fundamental issues that uh, restructuring borders on that are so much uh, over budget to the extent that if we elect one million people, you keep on changing them, those parameters fundamental can change. I give you an example now. Take the issue of Sharia. Hmm. Those who are mostly will take a position, even if, if you come 20, 30 years next, hmm. that Sharia court continue to function, the real court of appeal continue to function, you can't do anything about it. That is one of them. There are other parameters, like for example, you wake up now, I want to say that you, let's remove country and look at government from the constitution so that the uh, division of uh, allocation of revenue will be based on state alone. Certainly some part of the country who are enjoying comfortable majority of this local government will never allow it to happen. So there are so many of those factors that fundamentally they would never allow, except through any other means, not constitutional means. Oh, hmm. this is really... <laughs> <laughs> so there is no it, hope for a it, new it's constitution. It's quite heartbreaking to hear this. It's sad. Well, my view of it is that maybe what you engage in seriously first is physical restructuring. When you deal with the physical one in terms of devolution of powers, that would take us to a regional level. From there, we can then define who we are and where we want to be. Okay. It has happened before. Okay. We probably need to retrace our step back. Okay, okay so, um, <laughs> sorry to cut you, Lamy. <laughs> it's fine. Now, Nollywood actor Yule Dochi and former um, Anambra um, gubernatorial aspirant uh, said that the, the problem is not that there, there isn't, um, that people in government right now, they would want to hand over to younger people, but they are there aren't a lot of young people who are interested in, in, in politics. So my question now is, what is, what would you say is the cause of the vacancy in the age gap? It's like we have people in their 60s and 70s and above governing us, and then the, young people. Yeah, the young people are just there, dormant, doing nothing. There's a huge vacuum. What, is the, what would you say is the cause well, of that? Well, let me say first and foremost that uh, statistically, the young people have about that today they are in the neighborhood of about sixty percent of our population. Right. The implication of which is simple that if the young people can 
organize themselves and vote along that line, they will win their positions. That's the first implication. But why is it that they haven't been able to achieve that feat? That is what we need to address. It's not that if some of them are not coming forward. The, the problem is that, you see, there is this argument on the part of some of the older people that, look, those people lack leadership quality. And my simple reaction to it is always that, well, let me assume without considering that that is true. It is an indictment on the older ones that are laying, asserting that fact. That means that they feed in treating the younger ones to have those leadership traits. That's number one. Number two, if that is there and we notice that gap, then it becomes or it behoves of us as the older ones to start bridging that vacuum. How? By engaging them in leadership training, developing their leadership capacity and capability. That is where we need to go. Then thirdly is the fact that because most of them that we even have now, the way we are bringing them up, you see, this country, that's another shameful thing about it, is that there is no sense of value again. Hmm. Our values and virtues have collapsed totally. It's no more in the system. You see somebody who is just a fresh graduate, he wants to live in a duplex in Vibanana, he wants to ride the next day a, a range over. Now, if, for example, through whatever means, in most cases, illegal means, he does acquire those things. Do you know, rather than the parent probing or reminding, the priest means the child and commerce on him. They, encourage, they don't ever, nobody ever asks. His friends, his associates never ask. The community never ask. How did you make it overnight like that? Nobody asks. And that is how much our value has sunk. You wrote it completely. Wow. So, those are the issues that are bothering, that are dealing with these people today. That even if we allow them, most of them, that which is what they are saying is that some of these people, they, when they get there themselves, they become more of disaster than asset hmm. because we are not develop their virtues, not train them in a manner that they are values. In fact, most times they don't even, they are not go free. So it's a major challenge that we need, again, like I said, we are back to our uh, our premise, education and enlightenment too. Right. If most of them today said their own vote too, or most of the youth, they said it all over the open, particularly because most of them are unemployed. Unemployment rate now, I think it's about 30 something. You know, and it's going to get worse with this COVID. Yes. It's getting worse. So some of these people, they look for shortcut. Everybody is looking for shortcut. And that's another syndrome that is killing us today. Shortcut to everything. So our challenge with the youth is that I believe in the youth, I must confess to you, because I ascended leadership position very, very early in life. Very, I was going to early. say that, Dr. Banure. <laughs> what did yeah. you say? I was going to reiterate that fact that you assumed leadership position yes. at a very I, young age. Very, very, very. Throughout my 12 years in government, I was the youngest person in the Lagos State Cabinet. So wow. I believe wow. in their capacity and their energy. And some of them even in their ideas. But the problem is that we need to quickly develop it mm. or regenerate their morals and their virtues. So, we need to regenerate it as so, part of our see, and let them see direction and do away with the, all this short call syndrome. Okay. Um, you would agree with me, Dr. Van Rey, that we've had flashes of good governance in Nigeria. And that was when uh, we had um, the independence initially in the days of um, Awolowo, Inamde Azikiwe, and all that. And that was when regional government was functioning. Do you think we made a mistake by going into states? And because most of the states are not viable. Do you think we should go back to the regional government? I've said it earlier on. I believe so much in it. We need to retrace our step. Again, mind you, the cost of governance is killing this country again. <laughs> no country Absolutely. progresses with over 50% personnel or the current cause. No country in the world. How can now when a country like that uh, will, will, will be parading about 60, 70 percent of the current expenditure, you are not heading anywhere. That's wow. the reality. Okay, so Dr. Bernere, I, I, I loved what you said about um believing so much in the youth and all of that. I know that they, there was there was something that played a major um, part of you, you know, 
starting off quite early in your life. And I, I believe strongly in the family unit, right? And if yeah. we must solve this problem, we must also go back to that foundation, the family unit. So how do we start to, you know, to build it from that unit? Because you mentioned something about going back to the grassroots and all of that. I think also grassroots entails going back to small pockets of families and building it up. So how do we go about that? I think I agree with you entirely that we also need to address that area. Today, a lot of parents have lost their a response, a sense of responsibility totally. And it's not so much at times unconnected with the economic situation of the country. Yes, absolutely. The father and mother lives home about six or five a.m. in the morning, returning about 10, 11 o'clock at night. Hmm. A young, uh, the young baby of uh, one year old has to be done by maybe the lady in one day, uh, uh, what do you call it now? Uh, a daycare? Uh, now, from that moment on, going forward, this guy lacks what is even essential, the biggest thing, love. Love. He doesn't even know what is called love, much less knowing what virtue or morals is all about. None. So that is one of the first challenges that we have. So we have to, as a society, redefine our goals in that respect and start finding or creating opportunities for interaction of the families in terms of of bringing up their children this is very very essential we need to also of course for me i believe in god i know god exists and i believe that the religion equally can play certain role it is well utilized is another area that can help the re in rebuilding this youth when they come to the usual virtues that is equally important our traditional values also we have to bring them up. Under westernization, most of them we have condemned ourselves. A child in Yoruba land, naturally in those days, we have to prostrate to greet an elderly person. But now, they will tell his barbaric practice. Why should that be? <laughs> when I was growing up, in the differential between my self and all of us in our family, usually around two, two years, but you dare not call you the next person to you name. But what has happened now? That as little as that. They say it doesn't matter. What does it matter? What does it matter? Then you now say the boy is not respecting a 17 year old. How will you respect him? He has never been treated with anything called respect. He doesn't even know the meaning. So these are little things little, little that we just must go back to and let them start appreciating it. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. So um, I like the fact that you said that you believe in young people and that we should um we should try as much as possible to take over office or become um uh, 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 uh get involved in governance i think pardon me so um there you also pointed out about lack of experience before ascending leadership and i'm like is 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 it really necessary to go through that leadership um, training. training before you you know aspire to get into a top position in government and also um what in bullet points actually because i noticed that it's easier to understand things when it's in bullet points what is it that our generation should learn or correct from the current leadership well in the first instance uh, the, the question about uh, i'm trying to recall now uh, the um, next question um having leadership experience before yes. aspiring for well, a position i think i agree with you you do not need that you do not necessarily need, mark my word, do not necessarily need leadership training in order for you to be a good leader. But because of the factor that I alluded to earlier, that because virtues has broken down, exposure has broken down, competence has broken down, fear of God is no more there, all these factors are so much badly eroded, mm. the structure of our youth, that these days you now have to quickly engage them in terms of capacity building before you can throw them in the leadership. Otherwise, they will somersault it for you. Mm. See why? Otherwise, you do not necessarily need to have it. Your exposure, your training, at times you are well equipped to deal with the situation. But where we are now, occasionally we probably need to... I have a, a movement, for example, an NGO that this with leadership training. We train youth, a uh, minimum of 250 youth every year. 
Wow. Uh, every year it's united action for change we do it every year and we are making progress and i know that party to me is doing something there and that also yes so if is. everybody is doing one or the other all over the, the one way or that we are able to somehow along the line we'll be able to develop that capacity well so that is in respect of that but the kind of current challenges let me tell you clearly one of the things we need to learn from my own experience when I was commissioner in Lagos State is that honestly, I said you deceive yourself, you need energy, physical, physical fitness. Okay. But even if you are the most brilliant person, you are the most competent, if you do not have that end, that stature, physical stature, honestly speaking, it might not be the independent strength of the system. Mm -hmm. And that is why we need this youthful energy of these people there. So that is one of the things that we must encourage them as much as possible to be there. Again, let me not for to forget that some of these people can also continue to tap from the wisdom and experience of others when they get into position. That can be a reservoir for them also. Again, we have made, like I said, our public offices too lucrative. And that's why people are ever ready to kill themselves over it. It's wow. too lucrative. And again, we do not encourage people to even have alternate contact address. Wow. People that do not have anything, we just go and drop them in a, in a their office that is bigger than them. Wow. And you now start lamenting that the man is, how will he perform now? This thing is too big for him. Wow. Us. Thank so you. The data that we even have now are complete weight of space. Wow. All over the place. Wow, I, I think we have really, really gotten uh, a pack load. Thank you so much, Dr. Mies Banire. We are afraid that we, we've run out of time. <laughs> we are hoping to bring you back, if you would agree, to come back. <laughs> I think we'll need to do a part two, three, four, five, six until we get it. <laughs> Thank you Good. so much. You are welcome. You are welcome. Thank you. All right, uh, ladies, it's been an amazing conversation. You know, he said something very profound that yeah. I think I need to reiterate because it means some people may not hear it, that all it takes for the nation to decay is the silence of, of the good, good people. people. Thank that's you. I think, I think that is the bane of our problem in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Right. Absolutely. So please don't be quiet. Let's speak up. Let's change this country. I believe so much in Nigeria. We will change the leadership in this country. Now, please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been a very insightful conversation. See the way we are calm today. <laughs> <laughs> and keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Way Show Africa One or at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Nigeria is what it is because its leaders are not what they should be. That's from Chinu Achebe. Now, we'll see you live on Friday at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Thank you, ladies, again. Thank you. I enjoyed myself. <laughs> Enjoy your evening. <laughs>